Hello, welcome back, my creative friends. Oh, reverb. It's, uh, it's a very loaded topic, as we all know. Uh, I have some other tips available for you on reverb, but I wanna just briefly do a summary of the two core types of reverb, which are algorithmic-based reverb and convolution-based reverb. Now, algorithmic-based reverb is essentially a fancy term for pretty much every reverb out there that's not convolution. Convolution's a much lesser category, probably 20 or 30% of the market is convolution based while 70% is algorithmic based. Um, and algorithmic reverb is essentially going to give you a, for lack of a better term, a fake reverb. Now it sounds real, don't get me wrong, but a convolution reverb is actually recorded with real microphones, real converters, real engineers, and real rooms all around the world. And they are meticulously designed to mirror uh, late reflections, diffusion, absorption, time constants, all these variables within the rooms that make these rooms special, like the best churches and cathedrals and outdoor arenas and stuff like that. So, Reverb really comes down, again, to the emotion of the song, and be sure to check out the four-part series on the blog at Continue Music Studio to really learn more about the nitty-gritty of reverb, and it's, it's a great read, guys. I'm telling you, you're really going to love it. Um, but think of it like this. If you're making mostly electronic-based music, and this could be even something like indie electronic to where you're using a lot of live instruments, you know, maybe real pianos, real guitars, and stuff like that, but you're doing a lot of process stuff, I find that convolution reverbs don't really fit in as well as I'd like them to. Now, on the other hand, they can be used as a cool effect. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for instance, you want to set up an Aug Sen with like a Colosseum, all right? And maybe you want to mirror, like, I know there's a, a massive amphitheater in Colorado where they have a music festival every year. Let's say, for example, I don't know if it is, but a reverb plugin came out that mirrored that patch of what it sounds like to have a reverb like you were at an outdoor music festival. Now that could be a cool thing to add on the track if the track has like a live feel. And you're like, huh, you know, I recorded this with some instruments. I want it to have like a live feel like people are hearing it on a big PA system at an amphitheater. That would be a great time to use an effect like that. Generally speaking though, I find algorithm algorithmic reverbs to be more useful because they're going to model uh, vintage effects, which is really cool. Like, like for instance, like EMTs or AKGs or large plate systems and stuff like that. And I feel like overall it fits better in the mix too. And, and it, it's, it's simpler, you know, like I like simple. When it comes to reverb, I love a bunch of different settings and time constants and diffusion ratios and all that good stuff. But like, I like the plug and play stuff where I drop it in, I turn it down, I adjust the percentage and it's good to go. With convolution, there are just a myriad of parameters to switch from. And that can be cool if you really wanna spend 20 minutes dialing in a reverb. But I find for me most often, I just want a good setting. I wanna use an EQ, maybe a compressor after it and just be done with it and call it a day. So I feel like if you're going to invest in third party plugins or you're gonna like really get into reverb because it is a loaded topic and it takes years to really master reverb properly start with basic algorithmic designs keep things simple go with like the simpler the better plugins and make sure that it's again reinforcing the emotion of the track with most electronic music things are made with synthesizers and MIDI so pairing a reverb well with that is a really advantageous thing because the last thing you want is to slap like let's say you just get a brand new convolution you're so excited about it so you want to go with the Sistine Chapel as a hall reverb on a big room track eh, it's not really gonna work I know you're excited about the new plugin but trust me that's not the best choice for the song so definitely be listening to the song close your eyes listen to the reverb and solo mix it into the track and see how it feels but ultimately i feel like if you do that and you stick with simple plugins that do simple things you're going to get a lot farther with reverb a lot faster until next time the pyramind mentorship network connects you to experienced professionals for truly customized private training in music production sound design music business and more use our scheduling tool to select the type of training you want pick your mentor Find a day and time that works best for you, then book your session. Your appointment will be confirmed instantly. Study only what you want. Progress at your own pace. Pay as you go. 
and do it all from the comfort of your home or studio. Our global network of industry experts are here to help you. Visit pyramind.com slash mentorship to get started.